Makes my questions way too large And I feel that I run far My memory fails me right I get enslaved to my own mind Forgetfulness of your grace Drags me around for miles until I see. Good evening, everyone. My name is Linda Gigax, and I'm a member of.
that the prayer team here at Sanctuary and for all coming here tonight from all different kinds you of spaces good to me before serving, I know your name. being everywhere throughout the week so we can stop and celebrate with you guys Grace, we, made it. From a <laughs> we made it here I know I'm taking a big sigh of relief I was lost and I felt the need Friday, we can finally do this the need for you. so thank you for taking time How out of your week and joining us to share this night of worship the beautiful thing You've about my worship heart is that it's not only a way to David says, I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation commends your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might, so that all people may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. That was verses 1 through 4 and 11 and 12. David describes the beautiful way that worship connects us in three directions. First, where we look upward to praise God for how good and great they are. Then we look outward to sing to our neighbor and remind them of God's goodness. And third, we look inward to think deeply about the lyrics we sing and to remind ourselves of the mighty acts and glorious splendor of God. So I invite you into the beautiful connecting gift of worship tonight, however you choose to engage your voice and your body in the act of singing. I'm confident it will be a precious gift to the Lord, to your neighbor, and to your own soul. Will you pray with me as I bless our time together? Father God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, thank you so much for bringing us here tonight, for quieting each of our souls as we sit in our chairs and take deep breaths to remind us that you are in us and around us. Lord God, I ask that you speak to each of us here tonight in whatever way, if it's an audible voice or a whisper to our hearts or a nudge in our souls. Lord, you know how we hear from you and you know how each of us needs to hear from you. Thank you for open hearts and open minds as we worship together tonight. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Wow. <laughs> Good evening, Sanctuary Columbus family. I'm so used to seeing y'all in the morning. You know, this is weird. Um, can you guys stand up as we uh, begin worship today? We're just going to spend some time just worshiping our God, being thankful, uh, particularly for the year that we've been through, the year that we're in as we enter the season of Thanksgiving. I don't know about you, but I want to give God a praise just to say thank you. Yeah. So can y'all do me a favor? Go, go to somebody next to you, behind you, give them a hug. And tell them I'm glad you're here. Go to somebody on the other side and tell them I'm glad you're here. <laughs> now shake off the, the dust of the week. I know it's Friday. We've probably all had a week. <laughs> I know I have. So let's symbolically shake that off this morning as we get ready to go and worship and have a praise party. Y'all going to help us out today? We're going to be one big choir today, all right? All right, let's go. You are God and you're in control. Seated high, you are Lord of all. Great I am, sovereign ruler. Lion of Judah, you are God. Everybody say, You are God, and you're in control. Come on, seated high. Seated high. You are Lord of Said, Great I am. Sovereign ruler, Lion of Judah. You are God. You are God. Now sing this with me after me. Things will change. Things will change. When we call.
together. Say, you are God. Sing it out. Say, you are God. And you're in control. And you're in control. You're seated high. Seated high. You are Lord of all. Said you are God. Come on, things will change when we call on that name. Great Jehovah. Things will change when we call on that name. Great Jehovah. Things will change when we call on that name. up in this place tonight say great Jehovah great Jehovah yeah God, we're taking this time out, God, to give you what you deserve today, and that's our best praise. We have countless reasons to praise you, God. So many things to be thankful for, God. But the only reason we really need to praise you is that you deserve it, God. You deserve it, God.
that up tonight. Here's my worship, all of my worship, receive my worship, all of my worship. Start from the top. You are Lord. my worship. Here's my worship, all of my worship, receive my worship, all of my worship. Here it is, here's my worship, all 
of my As long as I am breathing. As long as I am breathing, I will always worship you. Come on, let's put some harmony in the house. Always work. 
is my worship, all of my Receive my worship, all of my worship. Come on, let's sing that together. Here's my worship, all of my worship. Receive my worship, all of my worship. If you can in the sanctuary right now, raise your hands if you can. If you're watching us online, you can raise your hands too, as long as you're not driving. I know sometimes we go through things in life and we feel broken. We feel like God does not want to hear from me right now. I feel so distant from God, let me just take a step back. But God loves to hear the praise for broken people. He wants you in your mess to praise him and worship him. But you know what he says when he sees that? I can work with that. I can work with that. He loves to hear the praises of his people. And if you're wondering how to get closer to God, if you're feeling distant from God, the Bible said he inhabits the praises of his people. He doesn't just show up. He lives where the praises of his people are. So I dare you to make your house a house of praise. I dare you to make your car a house of praise. Make your little desk area, your little cubicle like your job a house of praise. And I promise you, God will live right there. He won't just come scoot by. He will live right there. So when we say, as long as I have breath in my body, God, God, I want you to live here in me. Don't just make a visit. Don't just... Take a seat, God. I'm making room for you to live here with me. Silent. Come on, lift it up, say it. And I will not be silent. I will. I will always worship you. In your mind today, as long as I am breathing, God, as long as I am as breathing. Long Yes, receive my worship. Well, my name's John Thomas. I'm on the prayer team, and I would like to uh, share some reflections on um, Thanksgiving, which is our theme tonight. You can be seated for now. Um, gosh, it's hard to come up here after worshiping <laughs> like this. Um, I, I always love these these times, and thank you, worship team. Oh my gosh, we got a wonderful worship team. Oh, come on, let's give them some praise. You know, and 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 I went through a progression here in this song. Um, I will not be silent. I will always worship you. As long as I have breath, those are are strong words. You know, and as I was singing it and singing it, then it changed to, I hope I will. I don't know what tomorrow brings. I know who brings tomorrow. I hope I will. 
And so I was singing that. And then it moved to de declaration. I declare that I will. Oh, my gosh. Well, as I was thinking about our theme of Thanksgiving, you know, Psalms 100 tells us to enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. God knows that when we focus on things to be thankful for, then we cannot help but praise the Lord. So what are we, what are we thankful for? Well, I thought of his, his provisions. He provides for us. Two things that he's provided is our, our life, the breath of life. You are here tonight. You are walking and breathing. That is enough to rejoice. And we have Jesus. He sent his son, Jesus. We can rejoice and praise him for that. And then his promises. Jesus said, I will never leave you or forsake you. That is enough to be thankful for. He also said, um, you will have problems, but take heart. I have overcome the world. He is with us in our problems, and every one of us have problems. He said, uh, cast your cares at my feet because I care for you. He loves us. 2 Corinthians tells us he's the father of compassion, the God of comfort, who comforts us in all of our troubles. He said, if you are weary, come to me, and I will give you rest. So we can be thankful for his promises. And so I thought tonight we would uh, spend a few minutes and just reflect reflect on things to be thankful for. You know, the world's finally got what God has been telling us to be thankful. There's teachings all over the place about spend time thinking about things that you're thankful for, and it changes your attitude. It actually improves your health. The world has finally understood what God has been saying. Enter his gates with thanksgiving in his courts with praise. And so let's spend a few minutes reflecting in your life what to be thankful for. And then we will continue to worship. Or, you know, you may be struggling with that right now. You may say, you know, I'm, my problems are, are, are so hard right now. I'm struggling. Please come up and ask for prayer. So there will be some of us up here to pray for you. This is community. This is family. You know, when one is weak, someone else is strong. And we pray for one another. We, we share one another's burdens. We not only rejoice with one another, we weep with one another. We share each other's burdens. So let some of us pray for you. Amen. sit in his presence. Cam, while they're uh, preparing to worship, I just have to share a testimony. And, and since I'm the pastor, I get the chance to just jump up and do stuff like this. I've been thinking about, man, how much God has been overwhelmingly blessing, exceedingly providing uh, for our family. And I just got two th quick things I want to share. Some of y'all know I'm a graduate of Morehouse College and my oldest son, that's all he's been thinking about. We got a little picture of him as a, as a, as an infant in a little onesie, little Morehouse onesie. And so 
Uh, he's academically strong. He can get into this, you know, this college on his own, and he's applied, you know, for early admission. And it's it's just, you know, my heart's desire that at least one of my four children would go to, to their dad's alma mater. Maybe one other would go to their mom's alma mater at Hampton University. We'll see. But Carter has applied, and it's a hard school to get in. I mean, it's difficult. But we got an assurance, and the assurance is this. My, my father-in-law actually has a close friend, somebody he discipled many years ago in Atlanta, Georgia, who's a trustee at Morehouse College. And when he told him that his grandson was going to be applying, he said, don't worry, I got him. Don't worry, I got him. This is how, how God can go before you to provide for you, even when you haven't prayed about it yet. You see what I'm saying? When he was discipling him, he didn't know that he was discipling a future Morehouse College trustee. He, he didn't know that he was discipling somebody who would, who would one day say, don't worry about your grandson. I got him covered. He didn't know any of that. But the Lord had provided the way for him, my son, with blessings that he didn't even know about for generations before that. Can I tell you another testimony? Because that one maybe didn't, didn't hit y'all. The, the right way. Uh, we have four drivers in the house and two of my sons, the one that's going to Morehouse next year and the, the next one's a junior. We'll see where he goes. And we had two vehicles, you know, in our home for these four drivers. And they're very active and they got active lives. And we're like, all right, well, what are we going to do? We need a car. We ain't got no, we ain't got no funds, you know, for that. Let's just pray and just see what, what happens. And then a family said, well, we'll sell you, you know, our vehicle. And, you know, we were like, man, thank you. And I was just like, yeah, that's cool, but I don't want to spend no money. Like, I really don't want to spend, I don't want to spend $100. I just like, I'm good. You know, the Lord is going to provide. Whenever that happens, I'll just keep riding my bike, you know, to wherever. And so then the family said, okay, you know, we'll drop the price, and they dropped the price. And at the meantime, somebody else, another family said, hey, uh, we got a car that we're waiting on, and, and when it arrives, we just want y'all to have this other car. You can just have it. You can just have this other one. I was like, oh, my goodness. Yeah, two people got it. Two people got it. And then the other family said, hey, you know what? We were thinking about it. Y'all can just have the car. Y'all can just have it. You don't have to pay nothing at all. You can just have it. You can just have it. And so we went from this, this family of four drivers with two cars to a family with four drivers with four cars. And I understand it's like, yo, that's them some American prayers right there. But I just want you to understand how God can go exceedingly above all that you even ask or think. And when God does it in your life, the only proper response is to give God thanks. The only proper response is to give God praise. The only proper response is to say, Lord, Lord, I give you all of myself because if you can do all of that with this little bit of broken thanksgiving that I give to you, if you can give me all of that with this improper and imperfect praise, how much more can you do, God, when I call on you, when I give you so much more of myself? I want you to know you all serve an exceedingly abundant God who delights in loving his children and giving his children good and wonderful things for your soul and for your very life. Will you just pause right here and just, as the worship team prepares this song and the prayer people are up here to receive your prayers, would you just pause right where you are and say, Lord, is there anything that I can give to you? A prayer, a praise, you won't turn away from it, God. 
that a small thing, that something you thought was insignificant, it's not even worth mentioning to God. It's, Lord, what's that little thing? It was something that even a, even a child in here might, might wonder if God is even listening to their prayers that they can give to you, Lord, in every heart and every mind right now. We take this and give it back to you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you can, if you can, stand as we prepare to sing this next song. And that is enough. 
According to his power, he's working in us. How much more does he want? How much more does he want? Whether you ask, think, or imagine, according to his power, he's working in us.
lift that up. The ones you raise have come to honor you. Oh, the ones you raise. The ones you raise have come to worship you. Oh, anybody know him as a keeper? Come on, we don't have words to say. We can just say, oh. you loved. The ones you loved have come to honor you. Oh, the one you love. The ones you love have come to honor you. Come on, one more time to set up. Whoa, say Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. sing that with me. Oh, we give you all. We give you all the glory. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Come on, let's sing to 
you are Alpha. Let's sing that together. You are Alpha and Omega. And Omega. We worship you. that up tonight. One more time with just the voices, just the voices. Let's lift that up today. Oh, we give you all. We give you all the glory. We worship you. We worship. One more time, one more time. Let's be one big choir before we leave today. Oh, we give you all. God, we lift you up and we worship. We worship. Come on, one more time, one more time, one more time. Come on with everything you have. Whoa. you receive your benediction today my prayer is that you will leave this place having been reminded of the goodness and greatness and might of our Lord and Savior our helper our redeemer our healer he never changes he has always been the greatest and so would we be reminded and sustained by this truth as we continue to be changed and transformed in the likeness of Jesus. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Go in peace.